you know, my friends that I know, it's like, I don't want to associate Muslim. Um, they have their own type of ideology. Uh, they are normally like good people, stuff like that. And I, I keep on telling them, I say, I have Muslim friends where I have you as a Christian, right? Uh, I know a lot of Muslims who don't act such way. All my Muslim friends don't act such way. They don't have that kind of like perspective or narrative. Like they're going, they're going we, we, we're meant to kill you guys. We're meant to bomb you guys. Nope. Nope. What's up guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new yet, my name is Divine. I'm a musical five, minominak, drummer, and a keyboardist. I have been for many, many years. I started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so, so fantastic. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Perseverance Reaction in order to recommend your favorite singers for us to react to. Hey, you killed it, you killed it, you killed it. Are you What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling yeah. good. Today, guys, we back again with the guys in the video. Yes, and My name is Diva, and welcome to the Perseverance Guys. Today, we're gonna be reacting to Mehdi Hazem. Islam is a peaceful religion. Oxford Union, guys. Wow, I think there's a date. Uh, and I would love to check this out. So, you guys keep on recommending beautiful stuff for us. Uh, you guys know should do things as hard music. So we give that check now some certain things out. And this is gonna be my first time checking this out. We are non-Muslim, we are actually Christian guys. So checking out this sort of video, it's I mean don't know this space right now. Uh but I just should we do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know how it is guys, we'll talk this right over here at yeah. well. Let's get into this video. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Lovely to see you all here tonight. We are having a very entertaining night, are we not? With some very interesting things being said uh, from the other side of the house tonight. Um, let me begin by saying, as a Muslim, as a representative of Islam, I would consider myself an ambassador for Islam, a believer in Islam, a follower of Islam and its prophet. So in that capacity, let me begin by apologizing to Anne-Marie for the Bali bombings. I apologize for the role of my religion and me and my people, uh, for the killing of Theo van Gogh, for 7-7. Seven, seven. Yes, that was all of us. That was Islam, that was Muslims, that was the Quran. I mean, astonishing, astonishing claims uh, to make in the very first speech tonight, on a day like today, where the Conservative Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is having to come out and point out that these kind of views are anathema. And I believe you're trying to stand for the Labour Party to become an MP in Brighton. If you do uh, and you make these comments, I'm guessing you'll have the whip withdrawn from you. But then again, UKIP's on the rise. They'll take you, the BNP. They might have uh, something to say about your views. <laughs> this is what Hassan always does. <laughs> by the way. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, just on a factual point, since we heard a lot about the second speaker, about how backward we Muslims all are, on a factual point, you said that Islam was born in Saudi Arabia. Islam was born in 610 AD. Saudi Arabia was born in 1932 AD. So you were only 1,322 years off. Not bad? Not bad start there. Uh, talking of maths, by the way, a man named Al Qawarizmi was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, a Muslim, worked in the golden age of Islam. He's the guy who came up with not just algebra, but algorithms. Without algorithms, you wouldn't have laptops. Without laptops, Daniel Johnson tonight wouldn't have been able to print out his speech in which he came to berate us Muslims for holding back the advance and intellectual achievements of the West. Which all happened in, without any- Guys, that's a massive combat. That yeah, I love that. Damn! Damn, that hit deep. Shit! If I'm going on a debate, I'll take this guy with me. Because like! He calculated everything. He was ready for the combat. Shit! Any contribution from anyone else other than the Judeo-Christian people of Europe. In fact, Daniel David Levering, the author of the Pulitzer Prize winning historian and author of The Golden Crucible, points out that there would be no Renaissance, there would be no Reformation in Europe without the role played by Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd and some of the great Muslim theologians, philosophers, scientists in bringing Greek text to Europe. As for this being our university, I will leave that to the imagination as to who is our and who is there. Uh, I studied here too. Um, an astonishing, astonishing set of uh, speeches so far making this case tonight. Uh, a mixture of just, 
cherry-picked quotes, facts and figures, self-serving, selective, a farrago of distortions, misrepresentations, misinterpretations, misquotations. Uh, Daniel talked about my article in the New Statesman, which got me a lot of flack, where I talked about the anti-Semitism that is prevalent in some parts of the Muslim community, which indeed it is. Uh, of course, I didn't say in that piece that it was caused by the religion of Islam. In fact, uh, modern anti-Semitism in the Middle East was imported from, finish the sentence, Christian, Judeo-Christian Europe, where I believe some certainly bad things happened to the Jewish people. In fact, Tom Friedman, Jewish-American columnist in the New York Times, told me in this very chamber last week that he believed, had Muslims been running Europe in the 1940s, six million extra Jews would still be alive today. So I'm not going to take lessons mm. in anti-Semitism from someone who's here to defend the Judeo-Christian values of a continent that murdered six million Jews. Uh, moving swiftly on. Moving swiftly on. Yes. Exactly Absolutely. Well, I'm about to make that point. No, 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 I'm about to make that point. You're right. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you 110%. That is my point. I don't think Europe is evil or bad. I'm a very proud European. I don't want to judge Europe on the basis, but if we're going to play this gutter game where we pull out the Bali bombing and we pull out examples of anti-Semitism in the Islamic community, then of course I'm going to come back and say, well, hold on. I mean, look, let's be very clear. Daniel here was a last minute replacement for Douglas Murray who had to pull out. And Douglas and I have a well-documented differences, but to be fair to Douglas, as to be fair to Anne-Marie and to Peter, atheists. Atheists see all religions as evil, violent, threatening. What the problem I have with Daniel's speech is that Daniel comes here to run this robust defense of Christianity, forgetting that his fellow Christians, people who said they were acting in the name of Jesus, gave us the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, the anti-Jewish pogroms, European colonialism in Africa and Asia, the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, not to mention countless arson and bomb attacks on abortion clinics in the United States of America to this very day. I would like a little bit of humility from Daniel first before he begins lecturing other communities and other faiths on violence, terror and intolerance. But, no thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. But I would say this. I, I love his speech. I love the way he's being calculated. He knows yeah. what to say. And he's, like, he's taking everything a step at a time. And I really enjoy being prepared right here. I love how he hits the points deep. Yeah. Like, his point was clear. You don't have to come out and say, talking about the killings, the crisis that really happened. Mm -hmm. He himself, he had to come up and defend Muslims. And that I actually accept. All religions, they also have their bad parts. Like, there's no religion you tell me. They have not done something terrible. Like someone who is a Christian have actually done something terrible. Someone who is a Muslim have actually done something terrible. Someone who is a Buddhist have actually done something terrible. Like everyone, it depends on self. Sometimes personal ideology yeah, in some way, not actually like yeah, the religion yeah. itself, because most religion don't teach you just to go and kill yourself, because it all depends on personal preference. As, as a Christian, we don't support killing. I would say do that kill. Two by the sword, show that by the sword. So, my religion, Christian, would also post killing. So, but that does not mean some Christians don't commit some bad crimes, like killing, like murder, killing a lot of people. But that doesn't mean I will have to point out black to like Muslims, they bomb, bomb themselves. That doesn't mean Christians don't do such. We get so we don't have to like criticize in such way or should I use like drag them out. That is what they are really known for. You get uh, my point. So I guess his point when he's trying to well, like defend himself and defend where he's coming from. I think so this is a proud movement. And and also a proud yeah, movement so. The generalization of it, I feel that is a problem because people just generalize that Muslims are uh, suicide bombers. Bombers, yeah. Like I've met a lot of Muslims and honestly they're nice people, they're very really peaceful nice. and they so, don't just so want amazing. War. Most people. So, like uh, sometimes I even feel they're even more calm than I am. Yeah. So you're just generalizing that Muslims are like this. I don't think that is it. Just don't um, judge other people based on some certain people's behavior. So everyone is different. Everyone's personality and preference is different based yeah. on them that said, not based on the religion they are in or what what someone in that religion have done. So Muslims are very nice people. So I get how he's explaining these things, and he's a very good debater, honestly. Yeah, in history, some Muslims are trying to do some certain things they are trying to do for their religion. Yeah. But some of them are not really sure of what they are trying to do. They don't really know basically what the Quran is actually talking about. You get me? So some of them act on their way, thinking they are doing the right thing. 
So everyone has their own understanding of this. So let's keep it watching this. To address the gentleman's very valid point here, I'm not going to play that game. I don't actually believe that Christianity is a religion of violence and hate because of what the LRA does in Uganda or what, uh, what crusaders did uh, to Jews and Muslims in Jerusalem when they took back the city in the 12th or 13th or whatever century it was. I believe that Christianity, like Islam, like pretty much every mainstream religion, is based on love and compassion and faith. I do follow a religion in which 113 out of the 114 chapters of the Quran begins by introducing the God of Islam as a God of mercy and compassion. I would not have it any other way. I don't follow a religion which introduces my God to me as a God of war, as some kind of Greek God of wrath, uh, as a God of hate and injustice. Not at all. As Adam pointed out, you go through the Quran and you see the mercy and the love and the justice. And yes, you have verses that refer to warfare and violence. Of course it does. This is not a motion about pacifism. I'm not here to argue that Islam is a pacifistic faith. It is not. Islam allows military action, violence in certain limited contexts. And yes, a minority of Muslims do take it out of that context. But is it religious? Well, we talked about Woolwich. Exactly. Daniel and Anne-Marie have suggested that it's definitely religion that's behind all of this. Well, actually, what I find so amusing tonight is we're having a debate about Islam. And the opposition tonight have come forward. We have a graduate in law, a graduate in modern history, a graduate in chemistry. Uh, and, you know, I admire all of their intellects and their abilities, but we don't have anyone who's actually a, an expert on Islam, a scholar of Islam, a historian of Islam, a speaker of Arabic, even a terrorism expert or a security expert or a pollster, let alone to talk about what Muslims believe or think. Instead, we have people coming here, putting forward these views, putting forward these sweeping opinions. Listen to Professor Robert Pape of the University of Chicago, one of America's leading terrorism experts who, unlike our esteemed opposition tonight, studied every single case of suicide terrorism between 1980 and 2005, 315 cases in total. And he concluded, and I quote, there is little connection between suicide terrorism and Islamic fundamentalism or any of the world's religions. Rather, what nearly all suicide terrorist attacks have in common is a specific secular and strategic goal to compel modern democracies to withdraw military forces from territory that the terrorists consider to be their homeland. And the irony is, when we talk exactly. about terrorism, the irony is that the opposition and the Muslim terrorists, the Al-Qaeda types, actually have one thing in common. Because they both believe that Islam is a warlike, violent religion. They both agree on that. They have everything in common. Osama bin Laden would be nodding along to everything he's heard tonight from the opposition side. He agrees with them. The problem is, the problem is that mainstream Muslims don't. The majority of Muslims around the world don't. In fact, a gentleman here started quoting all sorts of polls. Gallup carried out the biggest poll of Muslims around the world, of 50,000 Muslims in 35 countries. 93% of Muslims rejected 9-11 and suicide attacks. And of the 7% who didn't, they all, when polled and focus grouped, cited political reasons for their support for violence, not religious reasons. And as for Islamic scholars and what they say, well, Daniel talks about our University of Oxford. We'll go down to Oxford's Centre for Islamic Studies, get hold of a man named Sheikh Afifi al-Akiti, who is a massively well-credentialed and well-respected Islamic scholar who has studied across the world, who in the days after 7-7 published a fatwa denouncing terrorism in the name of Islam, calling for the protection of all non-combatants at all times and describing suicide bombings as an innovation with no basis in Islamic law. Go and listen to Sheikh Tahir al-Qadri, one of Pakistan's most famous Islamic scholars, who published a 600-page fatwa condemning the killing of all innocents and all suicide bombings unconditionally without any ifs or buts. There's nothing new here. This is mainstream Islam, mainstream scholarship, which has said this for years. You don't go out and kill people willy-nilly in the high street or anywhere else on a bus or a mall based on verses of the Quran that you cherry pick without any context, any understanding, any interpretation or any commentary. Please. Said it. Well, it's, it's it doesn't happen, apparently. I didn't say it doesn't happen at all. I never said it didn't happen. I don't blame Islam. Yes, it's a very good point. And a lot of us, a lot of us, are campaigning against that. And we're campaigning against it in the name of Islam. We're campaigning against it in the name of various interpretations of Islam. Anne-Marie comes and scares us with her talk of Sharia law. I would like to see the book of Sharia law. It doesn't exist. People argue over what Sharia law is. And you empower the extremists by saying there is only one version. You empower them all. I don't believe you Several took any interruptions, Anne-Marie, so I think you should stay there for a moment. Several countries. Here's, here's what we're dealing with. Here's what we're dealing with. 
We are dealing, I took your point, I took your point. Here we are dealing with a 1400 year old global religion followed by 1.6 billion people in every corner of the world, a quarter of humanity, of all backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities. And yet the opposition tonight wants to generalize, stereotype, smear in order to desperately win this debate. And here's my question, if we're gonna generalize and smear. If, okay, people say yesterday's bombers and we've got to be careful, there's a trial going on. Were yesterday's attackers, sorry, motivated by Islam? Big debate. I don't believe they were. Let's say they were. Let's say Faisal Shahzad, the Times Square bomber, was motivated by Islam. Let's assume for sake of argument uh, that Richard Reeves, the shoe bomber, was motivated by Islam. If Islam is responsible for these killings, if Islam is what is motivating these people, and Islam is therefore not a religion of peace or religion of war, then ask yourself this question. Why aren't the rest of us doing it? Why is it such a tiny minority of Muslims are interpreting their religion in the way that the opposition claim they are? Let's assume there are 16,000 suicide bombers in the world. There are. Let's assume there are for the sake of argument. That's 0.001% of the Muslim population globally. What about the other 99.99% of Muslims who the opposition tonight either ignore or smear? The reality is that the rest of us aren't blowing ourselves up tonight. The reality is that the opposition came here tonight not worried about the fact that me and Adam might pu pull open our jackets and blow ourselves up tonight because we're followers of a warlike warrior religion which wants to take over Europe and Daniel's university. The issue is this. <laughs> the issue is this. <laughs> I love this opposition day. can tell us tonight, and Peter Atkins is here, one of our great atheist intellectuals, can tell us tonight, can they can answer this question tonight, why don't the vast majority of Muslims around the world behave as violently and aggressively as a tiny minority of politically motivated extremists? Then they might as well give up and stop pretending they have anything relevant to say about Islam or Muslims as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this to you. Think about what the opposite of this motion is. If you vote no tonight, think about what you're saying the opposite motion is. That Islam isn't a religion of peace, it's a religion of war, of violence, of terror, of aggression. That the people who follow Islam, me, my wife, my retired parents, my six-year-old child, that 1.8 million of your fellow British residents and citizens, that 1.6 billion people across the world, your fellow human beings, are all followers, promoters, believers in a religion of violence. Do you really think that? Do you really believe that to be the case? They say that in the Oxford Union, the most famous debate was in 1933, when Adolf Hitler looked out for the result of the king and country motion, where they voted against fighting for king and country, and Hitler was listening out for the result. Well, tonight, 80 years on, there are two groups of people around the world who I would argue are waiting for the result of tonight's vote. There are the millions of peaceful, non-violent, law-abiding Muslims, both in the UK, Europe, Asia, Africa, and beyond, who see Islam as the source of their identity, as a source of spiritual fulfillment, of hope, of solace. And there are the phobes, the haters, the bigots out there who want to push the clash of civilizations, who want to divide all of us into them and mm. us and ours and their. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you all not to fuel the arguments of the phobes and bigots. Don't legitimize their divisions. Don't legitimize their hate. Trust those Muslims who you know, who you've met, who you hear, who don't believe in violence, who do want you to hear the peaceful message of the yeah. Quran as they believe it to be taught to the majority of Muslims, the Islam of peace and compassion and mercy, the Islam of the Quran, not of Al-Qaeda. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg to propose this motion to the House. I urge you to vote yes tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Oh my goodness this this was so good this was so amazing guys uh it's it's very fascinating and very beautiful i think a lot of people have to watch this because a lot of my friends that i know fled i don't want to associate muslim um they have their own kind of ideology uh they are not really like good people or stuff like that and i, I keep on telling them i say i have muslim friends where i have you as a christian right uh, I know a lot of Muslims who don't act such way. All my Muslim friends don't act such way. They don't have that kind of like perspective or narrative. Like they're going, they're going we, we, we we're meant to kill you guys. We're meant to bomb you guys. Nope. Nope. Uh, I love his debates. Uh, I love how he hits the points. Like he gave them what they want to hear. And he was able to like get his opponent's points and tell them, the real meaning of what they're trying to say, that they're getting it wrong. That this is not how you should spread it. That they are not like that. This is how this is who they are. I, I get him and I understand him. Talking from a Christian perspective, because I'm a true believer of Christ. And uh, I see his own way and I believe everything he's saying. Everything he's saying right here, I believe it. Because my Muslim friends that I have they've actually spoken just the same thing he's just saying right here. It's the same thing that they're all saying. 
like they don't promote violence they are not preacher of war they don't they don't kill that is not who they are and i'll keep on saying it thousands of times so as many people i can see muslims are not killers because 0.0.1 percent of people decided to commit suicide in order to kill many people along with them does not mean all of them are the same thing you don't judge one of the finger by your whole body because a little piece of ear is bleeding doesn't mean your whole body is bleeding you get me a little piece of them decided they have they have that kind of like ideology it doesn't mean everyone who is a muslim who believe in islam uh study Korea have such ideology you get me uh i really do respect this debate i really do love it and i would love thousands millions billions of people to see this uh change their mindset about muslims because they are really good people when you get to know them you get to love them more and you will love to associate yourself and also your family along them they are really trustworthy people i have some over here so i know i'm talking about i'm a friend to muslim so when i'm speaking for them when i'm speaking about them i know what i'm talking about because i'm not it's not someone who tell me it's something i've experienced so it's different from what i've been what i've heard something i've witnessed and and I've observed how caring they are and how understanding they are. What do you think about it, Julia? Um, I feel one thing we people in the world do is that if we have this experience with this particular set of people, yeah. this particular race, we kind of stereotype everyone in that religious believer, in that race, yeah, or this, that, that's that, that is how they are. Yeah. But that's not the case. Because you are saying this kind of behavior, this kind of feeling for someone does not mean someone from that same religion for that same so place we act so true because like i said most muslims i've seen they're actually very peaceful and the same way we see all this bombing or like oh i'm so sad i'm so sorry for people that lost their life that is the same way they the self feel because who we want people to die nope they believe in peace they believe in love and care so they the say they feel sad when they see stuff like that like quran does not support things like that quran does not tell you to kill or to murder someone is against it so when people are like blaming it on muslim i'm like oh this is not the case it's just when those people that actually bomb that they don't do it because of even the quran is said they do it based on political reasons they want to take their own land they want to rule over their own place so they yeah. want the country to give them that place so they yeah. bomb so they will give them that yeah place. they feel like they're not being treated right yeah so they, don't want they don't do it because of because they're even islam they do it for a different reason for a different cause so when you just generalize that Muslims are like this, yeah. I find it very strange. And I'm not even a Muslim, but here yeah, I'm talking about it because I've met a lot of Muslims. I've met them and they're very, very peaceful, honestly. So guys, comment up and know your thoughts to express your narrative. <laughs> what do you think about this video entirely? What do you think about how our reaction? Comment down below, guys. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video with as many as guys. If you have such videos like this, keep on recommending, keep on dropping down the comment section. We'll definitely check it out. So how it is. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all